Hi everybody, good morning. Thank you for coming in this hot, sunny Saturday day in Singapore. Um, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank you all the organizers for making this event possible. I, I know as a community leader it's a challenge and it's important to have a community gather to try to change experience and try to show off because this is for me the main issue. The, the show off to the community to say the word in Asia is something happening and there are many things built in this area that could be important for the rest of the world. So today, I, I, maybe the people who know me, as, as, as Jay mentioned about Drupal Console, I am a technical guy, but uh, sometimes I try to change my experience about how I envision the community as a business as a, and also as an organization uh, around the world and how we could work through the technology. So today I want to talk about globalization in the tech world. So my name is Eduardo Garcia, but everybody knows me as Enzo, only my mother called me Eduardo. So use Enzo, please, it's, it's a regular. Uh, I am the CTO of We Know. I am located in Australia, but as you could listen in my accent, I am not an Australian. Uh, I am Colombian. Um, then I moved on to Costa Rica for 15 years, and I happily moved uh, last year. I have been in Australia 18 months. You could find me in GitHub and Twitter as N Solutions. So about what we are and we know, we are a distributed company. So we have people in, I don't know, 12 countries in three continents. So I am the only one living in the teeny island Tasmania, which is maybe 80 times the size of Singapore, but it's a teeny, teeny tiny island. And what we do, what we give to the community, so we, uh, as SJ mentioned, I am the co-maintainer of Drupal Concert Project. Right now we have more than two and a half million downloads, and we are, in, we are working in this 2.0 version for the Drupal Console. So, it's a product we are really proud about that, and it's supporting in 18 languages. Uh, Chinese, Hindi, and English is one of the most important, of course, also Spanish, because I am a Spanish speaker. So try it if you didn't try it yet, please. So about globalization, so this is my definition about a specialization. So when you get it, get out of the university or just by, by experience working in technology, so you get experience and that leaves you the credibility in the, in, the, in the tech world. And after that, after you get the credibility in your world, then you become an expert. And this is what is called a specialization. But as Singapore maybe is the perfect example about global integration, right? Because Singapore is, <coughs> is a conjunction in many in many, in many ways, right? So this is the conjunction between Oceania, Europe in some way, Asia, obviously. And here we have a lot of cultures, right? We have Indian culture, Malaysian control, uh, European countries, um, many people is a conjunction. But in technology, maybe we try to use the opposite. So we encourage people to be experts in one field. And when we do, you just try to do something different, it's like a, you, you are trying to reach too many things that you can handle. And this is why professionals and enterprise, they try to be the genius or the, or the experts in some specific fields. And the other position is, is not encouraged. But I think it's possible to do both. And this is exactly what I want to talk today. So what are the benefits of being a specialization? For sure, you could reuse your knowledge because you create a website or a mobile application and then for the next project, you use all this knowledge you have from that and you don't need to create everything from scratch. And this is good, right? So if for people who have been in this industry for more than 20 years, 20 years ago, you have to do every new website from scratch, everything. You have to create the login, you have to create everything and this is exactly what is good for CMS, as Drupal, and WordPress, and other products, because you don't have to build everything from scratch. So the benefit of specialization is like a, after you build five or six websites or applications, all this knowledge, you could start, and then you could 
became a more faster company or developer, but the reality is just you are taking the short road to get a solution. This is the, this is the whole definition of, of expertise. It's like a, you don't have to take the tour to, take, to reach the objective you want to, to get, right? Of course, if you are a company, this is, if you get two or three experts, then you, you could scale your solutions because you, you could uh, repeat the process you already identified to do the same and do the same really well. And also, you could make an, a specialization. Like you say, I work with uh, vintage companies. I work with health companies. I work with bank. I work with education. And then you could see companies that choose sorry, those verticals, and then they say, oh, you are experts, and then companies, they like that. They say, oh, you have experience doing university websites. Uh, I like that because we, any vertical, they have their own universe, and they prefer work with people who already have this knowledge and they want to use, and this is the definition of specialization. But specialization also has some problems, and in our Drupal community, the, big, the best example for that problem is what we get until Drupal 7. In Drupal 7, <clears throat> we have the problem like a, we create our own lingo. So we call Drupal lessons. So that means this is something that will be only understood for people who already do Drupal. So I, I represent as an island because this is exactly what, how we were. Like a, people outside Drupal to try to get in Indonesia island was so, so difficult because they don't speak the language we use. Because we create everything by our own, and we, we think at that time that like we were special because of that. But it's exactly <clears throat> as, a, as an island. It's like a, you don't accept people from overseas, and you are losing a lot because, because of that. So we live in an island, and that means all this Drupalism, all this uh, lingo we use, it's like a presenting in globalization area. It's like a having a strong immigration policy. So in the border, we say, you know, you know, Drupal said, oh, oh, we like you, but you are not allowed to get in, right? And this is this is the problem with a strong immigration policy. And this is true for in in many countries that don't that have a strong rules on immigration. So they lose opportunities because they don't accept these people from overseas. Especially if they are really good in what they are. But then we recognize the problem, and then we try to solve that. How we will solve that? So we, we recognize there are other islands where we could try to communicate. So we create a transport method to try to reach each other. It's represented here by boats. So the idea is like a, we embrace multilingual. That means we have said we have our own lingo our own things, but with Steam, we could get something from other cultures. So in Singapore words, it's like a, this English, right? So we take the best of Chinese and the best of English, and we create the words of a language, which is <laughs> maybe it's English, right? But words for, more, for a lot of people. At least we have something in common to try to communicate. And then we embrace the best we could create from, from others. And in Singapore, we have Tamil, we have Malay, Malaysian language or, so, or, or other language around. And then what we do when we create this in Drupal 8, that means we embrace the multilingual. So we, we say there are other ways to solve the problems. So we bring something from Symfony. We bring something from the PHP community using Composer, right? And then we say we change our strong immigration policy for an skilled immigration policy. What that means? In the past, <coughs> people with not strong technical skills were allowed to become the community. So what we say, and this was a little problem, like we say to people, they need to learn new things that they don't get used, like OOP, Composer, all this kind of stuff. For some people, the change was hard, but that allowed us to say we are getting the talent from overseas in our communities to our community to try to get and create better products. So, and this is exactly what globalization is. So this is globalization in terms of community, and this is our current situation. But that doesn't happen only in community. That happens obviously for developers. So maybe I am 
more older than the average. But if you remember, or, or maybe the classes you get in the, in the college, in the, la in the last century or beginning of this century, we have this level of specialization. We call coders that people to know how to code in HTML. And they will say, well, I am an HTML programmer. So maybe it's a joke now, but at that time, that was exactly what it was, right? And then we have this specialization, webmaster, people who code in, in HTML. And then we have the web designers, people who know Photoshop, right? <clears throat> and these people, actually these people came from printing designer, right? So for there, we're a jump. And then we have this level of specialization. But then, as everything evolved in a globalization, what that means? Now we came in something like this is front end developers. That means that HTML developer had to, to transform in, in a person who know now some backend language. So it could be PHP, it could be Ruby, it could be anything, with some CSS, with some HTML5, with some JavaScript, and then we get the front end developer. And then we have the other people, which they're really programmers based in, our, in the current definition of programmers. Maybe in the future it will be different, and then it will be a joke if you code in, in Ruby, because everything will be IA or something like that. But now let's say something in PHP, MySQL, Ruby, <coughs> Node.js, this is a backend developer. And this has been true for last, say, 10 years. This is what happened. But then we take another jump into uh, our evolution in, in the path from a specialization to globalization, and maybe not a good one for some people. And this is this kind of, this kind of freaky, special people called full stack developer. So full stack developers is something like a, having a resume for a beer full stack is like a half, half of a letter is just 20, 40, 50 technologies. And then this is a popular joke in the internet to say, I know this, this technology, and I, uh, the, uh, you need to identify which one is a Pokemon, right? Because you write so many technologies that you don't know, but then you say you knowledge, right? So some people is a really full stack developer. For, for me, it's a kind of unicorn. It's really hard to find a person who match with all this. So at the end, as a company, you have to choose for all this full task technology, which one this person reach, right? Handle. Because it must to be front end, back end, mobile developer, uh, Ionic, or many, many things. And then every two weeks we have a new framework. And then, so it's difficult hiring people a full stack developer. So I, personally, I am scary when someone say, hey, I am a full stack. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is. It's, it's, it's fair for you if you say so. <clears throat> so this is, this is the kind of globalization in professional level. Right? And in the future, we are going to this, to go a more and more spread of technologies that you have to have in your umbrella to be a hireable person. Right? <clears throat> but now, we see community and we have professional, de uh, professional um, developers, but that also happened in companies. So maybe you heard about this company. It's a Pantheon. It's a hosting company. They started about six years ago, and they started providing hosting for Drupal solutions in, I could say, a small and intermediate websites. And they were doing really well. And they, were, they, they encouraged the community. They provide a sponsor for many events like this, and was a key player in the community. But two years ago, they say, why we don't go to, glo uh, to a global area, you know, to spread our base of users, not only Drupal. So I could imagine they have this thinking. So we have the architecture. We know how to do per good performance in MySQL, in PHP, and in Drupal. But what, is, what platform is also similar to Drupal? And then they say, well, maybe WordPress, right? Because WordPress use MySQL, use PHP. And they don't use OOP now that is, that is a Drupal 8. But in general, WordPress and Drupal in technical level, I could say they are 95% equal. They face, in terms, of, or, uh, in terms of hosting, it's just the same problem. And they say, 
why not? And then uh, as soon as they uh, announce that, they reach a lot of capital and they, they say in less than six months, they reach the same amount of users they have in Drupal in the WordPress community. And now they are a key player in the, in the WordPress community. So that means they change from a specialization perspective to a globalization perspective using the same technology to try to, to attack a, a spread base of level users. So globalization is also important in companies. Another example is Akia. So Akia, I, I swear, when, the, when Pantheon do that move, they say, because they say, maybe they have the same thinking in the beginning, but they cannot do that. Why? Because Akia is just a synonym of Drupal. But as a Drupal company owned by Dries, they cannot go to provide WordPress hosting because as a creator of Drupal, it was impossible to do that. It was a bad marketing that, that if they do that, this will be something like, a, what do you mean? Do you, you don't believe in Drupal at all? Or this is why you are doing WordPress? So it was a, maybe not a good decision. But then they, they, they try to, they, to do a twist in other direction. They say, since two years ago, kind of, this is the decouple movement is getting bigger and bigger, right? And then for some people, this is bad because they say Drupal is losing their momentum and they just get behind the scenes and everything is going uh, JavaScript, right? And Drupal is just something incorporate, just a the consolidation server, and then it's losing their their star in the development area, right? So for some people, this is bad. But with Akia D, they say, well, maybe this is the thing we could take advantage of. So they say, because all the couple things are going to Node.js, and then we have the architectures in terms of scale, server, performance, let's say now we are going to provide hosting in Node.js. And then we are going to say in our speech, we are providing the whole solution from back end to front end in uh, the couple solution. And then our clients are going to be happy. So what they say now is like, a, we know how to provide hosting for enterprise solution like Pfizer for Drupal and for Node.js, and we are good on that. And this is their sales speech. So that means if for a big company that is the synonymous for Drupal, if they, if they are allowed to say we could embrace another community, that means globalization is good. So you don't need to be focused only in Drupal. And this is important because I see when some people say, I am a Drupal developer, and now I am going to be a Node.js developer, uh, some people try to say something like, you are a defector, you are a trader. So why are you living in the Drupal community? Uh, and I say, this is only open source, so you choose the tools you want to use, right? So it's, it's not like a, it's not a call. So if Drupal doesn't fit your necessities, it's because maybe your clients have another necessities. And sometimes Drupal is, is always a solution, but sometimes it's not the best solution, right? So you need to, but if you don't have knowledge in other technology that is the best solution, of course you need to use Drupal because it's the tool that allow you to create a solution that you know how to do, right? So it's nothing wrong to go outside the communities to try to how integrate this. And now I have a better example in terms of companies, right? Platform Exchange. So, and then you have two guys or three, right? So Platform Exchange is a French, Australian globalization company. Right? They have people around the world, they have clients around the world, and they have a problem in terms of marketing inside their community. People don't see them as a Drupal hosting, and guess what? It's because they are not a Drupal hosting. They support a lot of technologies. If you see here, I use icons to, to show the platform they support. I cannot put here icons because they support too many technologies that I don't have a space to put all of, of here. So they have Ruby, they have Symfony, they have WordPress, they have Drupal, they have whatever you want. And this is a perfect example of, about how to use globalization to provide a service 
So they could go to a client and say, what do you have? No, yeah, yes, sure, I could do that. What do you have? Drupal, sure, I could do that. Ah, but I have, I have 50 websites in Drupal and three in WordPress. Sure, why not? So they provide that. And then what some people don't like in terms like, ah, oh, but you are not experts in Drupal, is actually the opposite. It's like a, they have a lot of expertise that, that they use in so many platforms that they could say we are experts in everything. But some people don't like when some people say like that. But some people like full stack. So what is the difference? So I could say platform in some level is like a, is like a the full stack for hosting provider that the, in the same way you have full stack for development. Right? What is the difference from mobile, PHP, Ruby, than WordPress, Ruby, or Rails, or whatever, in terms of hosting? So this is a, another a, a perfect example about why globalization is good. So they build the platform in Python, PHP, whatever they use, and they provide the server for so many communities. So what that means is, like a, as a company, if you choose then to do that, and then in the future you have a requirement for Node.js, you could stay in, you could stay with them because they know how to provide uh, support for the another platform that you want to use in the same platform. Right? <clears throat> but I know maybe what you are thinking. Uh, okay, let me let me first about fear. So talking about theory is really easy. So let me talk about the company I work, my company. If you have a Drupal workshop here. The thing is, when you are selling yourself, you are saying always, I am a Drupal company. But that is not totally true. And I am, sh I am totally sure about that. So like uh, last year, my work as a CTO is trying to find new technologies and how to integrate to try to take the best potential in our people. So what I did is I like to try things by myself, not reading blogs. So I, I learned Node.js. I learned Meteor.js. And then I create a solution for our company. It's a, this is a tool I build to manage time tracking, resourcing, hiring people, and to take the capabilities in the company. So this is one of the companies. So every team member of the company, uh, we tell them, uh, put the technologies you know and what percentage you know. And then we use this to have a big picture in our company in terms of what kind of technologies we could offer to people. And this is a picture for two days ago. So if you could see, we are 42 devel uh, developers. So if you could see content and front end is the core because this is mostly Drupal, WordPress, and the front end is about ground, uh, less, SaaS, this kind of stuff. But the other 50% are the technologies around. So we have people who have a strong knowledge in JavaScript, a strong knowledge in database. Right? And when I say database, it's not just MySQL, it's Postgres, it's MongoDB, it's SQL Server. There are some, some developers that they know .NET, that they know Docker, that they know Vagrant. Uh, we have some people who are good in testing. We have some people who are go good in in e-commerce and artificial intelligence in Python. So I am sure if you take a picture of any Drupal company and then you have this question of people. So do a listing about all technologies you know and what in what percentage you know, more than 10%. And I am sure you will have something similar to this, that where obviously 50% of the core is Drupal or WordPress or whatever you want. But the other are all the other tools you use to create a website, which came from Angular, Vue, React, sometimes in Python to create microservices or something. And then this is something you need to learn. Like a, maybe you promote yourself as a Drupal workshop, but you are more than that. And then when we are starting to do that and, and show this uh, X-ray picture about our company, then the client, they say, what do I mean? Do you know React? Yes, we know. How many people do you know React? So for, from 40 to 12, they know React. Really? OK. Oh, forget about Drupal developers. I guess I want to get these React developers. And then we start to realize, oh, that means we are more than that. And, and sometimes this is a, big, a good question you have to, to have for yourself. Uh, as a person, or as a company, maybe sometimes you promote and you sell from the wrong angle or not, or you don't have a complete vision in your company. 
and this really worked for us the last eight months. And this is a meteor, uh, actually this is a D3 graphite using React in, in Meteor. And the, the funny thing is I have a GraphQL server and we use Drupal 8 as a client to fetch this information to create some SEO keywords uh, to improve the SEO in a website using this tool. So it's like a, you, you are completing the cycle. So as a company, as I say, globalization. So these are like the main technologies we handle right now. And then you have some action. You could continue doing Drupal services, but also you could create a products to try to promote your company and improve your position in the market. So for us, uh, the main three maintainers in the Drupal console are in our company. So Drupal console is open source. We are not making money with that. But marketing is something really valuable for us because we always say, yeah, we are a Drupal console uh, maintainers. And it's true. <laughs> It's not something, it's, it's not fake news, right? But uh, recently we have been trying to create some tools. So in next month we are going to release a Magic Gen, which is just a software as a service. So we create a WordPress console. Yeah, WordPress console, I did that. And what is Magic Gen is a web interface to allow people to create projects in Drupal in WordPress and create all the code you, you want. So what that means is like a, as a company, if you are a Drupal workshop and then you want to, uh, to get a, a WordPress project, as a Drupal, we usually see WordPress projects like a, they are too easy. But believe me, it's not easy, especially at the beginning. So what we say, if you, if you pay, well, this is going to be free for six months to try the concept. But uh, in the future, it's like a, if you pay one license, you could say, I am good in PHP because I know Drupal. But the learner could to, to learn the, all the nuances of WordPress easily could take six months. And this is a lot of money. But if you use Drupal console in the past, as a PHP developer, you need to get all the decoration and then just know where exactly to insert the magic code you know you are good in at and then you have the website. So the idea is if you are a Drupal workshop, you create all the generators in WordPress, and then you put the connection with uh, Salesforce or with MailChimp or whatever. And then you, you almost immediately could begin in a, Drupal, in a WordPress workshop easily. This is the concept. And the Artifactor is a continuous integration, continuous delivery QA we are building. So this is going to take for the next end of the year or next year. And this is about Docker, Composer, or all this kind of stuff, uh, um, Travis and everything. And this is basically, we are trying to build something using all the knowledge we know. Because in the previous picture I show about the company, that means we didn't realize that. But the, from 42 resources in technical side, 15 of us, we have a strong knowledge in Docker and all these similar tools. And we didn't realize that. And then, and then we detect this is a lack of the tool uh, around that, and we decided to create something for us. So w this tool is internally for our clients, and now we are trying to create this for, for commercial purposes. We don't know, but we are st still in the process. OK, <clears throat> but now you could think, OK, may maybe this is a good speech, but this is only worse in Europe, in, a, in, in, in America, right? But we are in Asia, and no, we are different, and blah, blah, blah. I know that feeling because, uh, as I mentioned, I made all my professional life in Costa Rica, which is a teeny, tiny island. So for reference, Sri Lanka is bigger than Costa Rica. And Sri Lanka has maybe 10 times the population. And from there, we create Drupal console. So that does, uh, your location doesn't mean anything. So you could be good if you are good wherever you are. Right? The location is not, the market where you are is, is, not a, is, is not an important thing. The more important thing is you and your company. But I want to show you an example in this region. So two years ago, <coughs> I did a tour around the world for nine months. I visit 23, 25 countries 
in different cities, Singapore, Paris, Ireland, many countries. And then I try to talk with developers and Drupal workshops in, in all the cities I visit to try to hear for them. And um, basically what I found that is in all these communities there are Drupal workshop doing really well. And some of them were more, more rich in terms of the service they provide because some of them outside Drupal side they provide mobile development, right? To connect them. This is in general what I found it, right? But then I found that some as any person, when you wake up Usually you have every day 10, you, 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 know, you have 10 brilliant ideas to do. And usually you, you do zero every day, right? As it's, it's the same for company. Why? Because the fear to try to leave our son of comfort. The, it, this is a human normal situation, right? But then I founded an Asian company that really inspired me. And I, actually I try to copy the model they do. So when you are talking about this technology environment we have now, we have this concept of a startup. Everybody wants to have a startup. But for me, a startup is to have a bakery shop. This is a startup and a difficult one. Having a butcher is a startup and in a difficult one, right? And what some people do is like they leave everything one day and they say, I am going to this, do this idea, which is a $10 million idea forget about Drupal, forget about WordPress, forget about everything, and I am going to focus on this idea. But I like the approach these guys did. So this is a company called Taiwan Big Data, located in Taiwan, and they were a Drupal workshop with some mobile development for some clients. So they have this crazy idea, as anybody has. So they say, I want to do something with IoT, and this guy has this idea, I want to do a smart diaper. And when, when he showed me, and I was really envy, and I say, what a minute. So you say, nobody has this idea before. No, nobody. And a smart diaper is like a device they put in a, any napping or diaper, whatever, how you call. Because they say this is for elder people or for babies. This population has the same problem. They don't have mental enough knowledge in language or in brain to say, I need to change my diaper. So the parents or the carer, they always say, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Ah, oh, it's too late. And now it's a problem. So what they say is like, with this device, they are going to measure acidity, humidity, depends, depends on the area, because these measures are not the same here or in New York. So they create this device. But as I say, they, what they say, they say, we are going to bootstrap this using the Drupal money. So we are going to continue with the Drupal money, but we are going to support this, because before that, they don't know anything about how to create this kind of devices. So they know how to do the websites in Drupal, they know how to do mobile applications, and they invest money in create this hardware stuff, and they did. They get the 1.0, they prove this is possible, um, and wasn't crazy, uh, and then they get a patent. But then they realized the prototype they built wasn't really ready for mass production, for performance, for cost of the production, uh, and for money perspective, because to create IoT is really expensive. You need millions of dollars. So if, if they have the approach, like, I forget everything and do this, this their, their story could be something like, a, this is another startup failure, and then go back. But they say, hmm, wait a minute. Let's pause this idea. Let's go back to Drupal and Mobile. We get a patent. So in the process they were doing about the research, about the factories and everything, how to do that, the factories they choose to do that, they say, oh, so you could do something in IoT. So they say, why you don't help us to create a, a cloud platform to connect the IoT we are going to design based in your idea. Not the same product, but the same logic in this kind of products. And they say, why not? <laughs> well, it's money. So starting with that, they say, yeah, but maybe Drupal is not the best approach. Let's try to learn something with Drupal. And they create this, this platform for the client to connect all these devices. And now they have two, two kind of business, Drupal and mobile, 
and now they they uh, they create Node.js platform in cloud to connect those those devices. So now they have a new line of business. At the same time, this guy they have another crazy idea. They want to 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 have some vintage idea. This is a uh, they have the idea to create a product to help people to forecast investment in stocks, right? It's a, it's a big problem. And then they create this in Python, and they do the same. They say, we will continue with Drupal business, but we will invest some money in create this company, right? Not Drupal Red, but in Python. But we need this small money to create this. And they create this new company called Plants. This company right now is still in investments. So they are not making money, but the product is, is functional. So if you want to invest in Taiwanese <laughs> stocks, maybe you could use. But then the company, this, this sister company, they, ha they have this need. They need to create a chatbot using IA for this company. And then this guy, they say, wait a minute. When we create the cloud platform for, the cloud platform for IoT, we learn Node.js, and we learn also you could create chatbots with that. So let's try to use this technology to create a chatbot for our sister company, right? And they did, and works really well. And then they say, why we don't open a line of business for chatbots in Node.js? So now they have Drupal websites, they have this Node.js cloud platform, and they have this service to create chat providers for other customers. So obviously they sell first to the current customers and then they find another clients. So all based in their own needs they create in their network of companies they are trying to build. <clears throat> but then they say, hmm, you know what? Now we create this platform for the client, but maybe we need to take a different approach. So remember when I say the 1.0 version what could be a failure because the need of a lot of money. They say, let's try to do a 2.0 version, which is better in performance, um, better construction to try to reduce the cost of production. And this, this, is, this is the 2.0 version. So they did. And now they say, OK, this is better. It's ready for production, but we don't have enough money. They, then for me, they have a brilliant idea. They say, we have a patent. So we, what we are going to do now is we create a product using the same knowledge we, we have after creating the cloud platform for the client. And now we are going to create a cloud platform for any IoT. And now we are going to license the patent. So if you have enough money to pay a factory in Taiwan, and then you pay the royalty for the, the smart diaper. So you pay the royalty, and then this guy, they sell you the IoT, and with enough money in a week, you could have your own brand or a smart diaper. So they, this is the way they use to monetize the, their idea. So they sustain their IoT platform, and then they some money for the, the investment they did to create this, this smart product. So at the end, what happened <coughs> in terms of number, this, is, this whole process takes three years. So let's imagine three years ago, they sell $1 million per year. So they say, now in terms of Drupal, they sell only 70% what they used to sell before. So that this is $700,000 per year. But now that only represents 10% of the business. 30% is represented by chatbots and 25% is represented by licensing they sell, and 35% is represented about the IoT, because they don't sell the cloud only for the smart diaper. They connect right now, as he say, about six other uh, IoT devices for other providers using their platform. So now they jump from three years ago to sell $1 million per year, and now they sell $7 million. And this is, is the same what I showed you about the, the boats connecting islands. So what they did is take all these crazy ideas to try all this globalization to connect the dot, right? So obviously, now it's easy to see, to, to watch in, in, if you say, in a forensic view to say, oh, <laughs> it's easy, right? But obviously, they have a lot of struggle. But this is how they, they, the road they took 
to try to handle all this idea. Of course, they have other crazy ideas that doesn't work really well, but you, you need to take a chance. So with, with, things, with these things, I mean, having a Drupal workshop only is a huge achievement. It's a huge achievement, believe me. <laughs> I know about that. But it's, it's nothing wrong to try to do something different, to try to connect your business, because sometimes you, you will learn from your own perspective that you are really good in, in, other, in other areas, and maybe your clients, they have the needs that you could cover. So this is nothing wrong with that. So you just need to find what, what is exactly the best fit for you. So in general, so this is all say to say new brush sweeps clean, but all brew notes, all the corners. So that's for some people that means I need to stay in Drupal. But I, I think you could you could have you know two brush and use each one for whatever works better, right? Drupal in the in, in the sample of this Asian guy, they are still doing Drupal and works for some scenarios. So they just choose to find another connections with the other technology words. And the main, the main idea here for me is don't burn the bridges, because in the near future, this path that you used to have could be a shortcut to try another thing. So don't broke the lens. And that's it. This is all I have in, in terms of the idea of globalization from my perspective. And, and again, this is in Asia, this is in Taiwan. If war for them, maybe it could work for other people. Right? So this is all I have. So if you have questions. Hmm? Okay. Thank you so much. Ah, let me. Yeah, actually, when before we done, when we didn't do globalization, was a problem in terms of uh, human resources, because the main reason people leave the company was because we only do Drupal. They always say, Is, "I want to try something different. I want to try artificial intelligence. I want to use to try Node.js," and the company doesn't have that. Actually, this was one of the starting points to try to do something different. Because re people that were really good, they leave the company just because of that. And then we retain some people when we say, what about if you do 20% in Node.js or in Python? And they say, oh, did that change everything, right? So for some people, they stay that and then they increase the percentage because they prove it's, it's a good um, fit for them. And for some people, after they try, they say, oh, no, I prefer to stay with Drupal. Because they realized they, that they, that war wasn't what they expected, and then they come back. And this is normal in life, right? So sometimes you envision, you know, the grass is always greener <laughs> in the neighbor. But after you try, say, oh, it wasn't that easy to have this backyard, big backyard. So maybe you couldn't come back. And actually, for us, without doing that, was a threat for for a company. Okay, any. Uh -huh. Mm 
-hmm. Okay. So in, in our case, it's like a, in any company, you have that time, right? Holes between projects when they start to finish. In big companies, in my experience, what happens is these pe people invest this time in YouTube, usually. So what we try to help people is to first have an open source project. So uh, this is a capabilities problem. So when they find a person have a hole in that, so we check this profile and then you say, so this is an open source project that you could contribute where usually it's Drupal console or Sony Node.js or Sony WordPress. If they like that, they do that. If they don't, then we try to find a project or an exercise they could build in the technology they want. Uh, one specific example is uh, one guy, he want to learn machine learning. And then you say, okay, you have a week from now to the next project, try to build something to show and prove to the other people what you could get. And they, uh, this is good because that allow us to explore about that. And in terms of selling, then he changed for 10% to 20% in machine learning. And then we could say to people, no, we have people with experience in Python and this and this is and that. And obviously not always is that exactly, but that, that allow you to try to have a big picture about what people want, right? Uh, and, and sometimes in this kind of uh, machine learning, what happens is sometimes people give up and they say, oh no, actually this is too much a statistic. I don't like that. Uh, I prefer to try next time with Node.js. Right? But as I say, it, it, it's, it's safe for developers to try in this uh, control environment because the other way is go to the market and try hard with a provider and then the, the market is going to prove you that you are not good in machine learning and then you could face six months unemployment because of that, right? So as a person, you have to choose your battles. So if a company provide this, this gap to say, maybe I could try, and um, you try. It's like for me, I, I totally sucked in front end, right? And I proved that myself 10 years ago and I never try again, right? <laughs> You have to choose whether you are good. That's it. Anything else? I think we run out of time. If, I will be here all day if you want so to talk about this. And thank you for, for listening to me about these visions I have about technology and globalization. Thank you so much.